To person who is watching this video, hi, I'm Ying Chang Wang. And I'm Yi Yang Sun. This is our machine learning final project, Human Activity Recognition. So the goal of our project is to write a program that makes computer learn from the data collected from several mobile phones users in order to do some reliable predictions on the user's activities while holding their phones. So our motivation to do this project is that mobile phones industries is one of the largest industries in the world, which has captured 4.2% of the global GDPs in year 2015. So our project, which based on the cell phone sensors data, would be really helpful and widely welcomed by mobile phones app producers. So we do our project in several procedures. The first step is to collect data. We collect our data from a famous machine learning database called UCI Machine Learning Repository. Then we applied several filters to remove noise from the original data. Then we relate our data to time in order to make time series predictions. Since the original data only consists of two components, the total accelerations of the users and the angular velocities of the users' activities, we separate the total accelerations to get the user's body accelerations. So after all these procedures, we finally obtain a dataset consists of total accelerations, body accelerations, and angular velocities of the users. The next step is future selections. First, we change our functions variables from time to frequency in order to get another set of data. Then, for each set of data, calculate their means, standard deviations, and medium, and etc. to obtain our features. And finally, after all the calculations, for each data points, we will get a 561 features in total. Then for the classifying works, we tried several methods, including support vector machines and KNNs. For both methods, we've tried to apply PCA on it in order to reduce the time of calculations. The first algorithm we use is called support vector machine. It has three key ideas. First, to use optimization to find solution with largest margin. Next, we seek the large margin separator while allowing for some test errors. The third one is to use kernel chip to make large nonlinear feature spaces efficient. We can apply Lagrangian multiplier to this problem and calculate the derivative of it. For the multi-class support vector machine, the logic is the same, but only with more classes. This is the implementation of support vector machine. We use a library called sklearn, which is a really powerful library. The third algorithm we use is called KN, which is a supervised machine learning algorithm, K nearest neighbors. First, we need to find the distance between the new data point and the original data points. And then, find the k data points that are closest to the new data point. The class of the new data point is the class of the majority of the nearest neighbors. To implement this, we first write KNN for a single data point and write a function called classify, which applies the KNN to the whole test data. As we can see, KNN rely largely on the distance, so it can be affected largely by the dimension. To reduce the dimension, we think of the algorithm called PCA, which is Principal Component Analysis. It needs to pre-process the data so that it has zero mean, and then project it to a hyperplane. So the problem is to minimize the mean square error. To do this, we can use the eigenvector and eigenvalue, 
we first calculate the eigenvalue and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix and select the k largest eigenvalue with, with its corresponding eigenvectors. This is our implementation of principal component analysis. Using NumPy, we can easily compute the covariance matrix and its corresponding eigenvalue and eigenvectors. The results of the tests are a little surprising. Soft margin support vector machine appears to be the most reliable method, which gives us around 5.9% of error rate. However, KNN produce a higher error rate. It gives us around 9.2% of error rate. The reasons behind this is that support vector machine is a comparatively more scientific method than KNN, while KNN itself is highly affected by the curse of dimensionality. KNN needs to calculate the distance between the new data point and the original data points. So it can be highly affected by high dimensional data. To improve this situation, we apply PCA to both algorithms. Surprisingly, the test error rate is worse than any of it. The reason behind it could be PCA reduced the dimension, however, it loses many important components, and the data has been pre-processed, so they are all between minus 1 and 1. The distance between them are relatively small. If we apply PCA, then we lose the important component while the situation has not been improved. So it results in the high test error rate. So after all these works, we try to figure out the relations between training size and training errors and test errors. So from the graphs shown on the slides, we can see that the increase in training size won't do much effort on the improvement of training errors, but instead will do a dramatic improvement on the decrease of test errors. So we can see that for a larger training samples, we can get a better prediction rate. And that's all for this. Thanks for watching.